Hi folks, how are we all doing today? I hope you're feeling some joy in these difficult, difficult times. I hope that you're finding, feeling and expressing that love that we all need. It is hard at times. I'm trying to do my little bit by offering some sustenance for the heart, mind, spirit and soul with these daily reflections. This is the fifth in the series since we've had to go into physical separation due to the coronavirus. I've called this one grief, the price that we pay for love. So I invite us just to still ourselves in silence. Let's invite a loving presence to be here amongst us and to awaken from deep within us. I light the flame of freedom in this, the cup of love, the cup of belonging, the cup of total acceptance. Come into this circle of love and acceptance. Come and join together in heart, mind, spirit and soul in this time of physical separation. Know that your whole being is welcome here just as you are, exactly as you are this moment. Bring your heart, no matter how broken, your body, no matter how weary, your mind, no matter how confused, your soul, no matter how empty, and your spirit, no matter how fragile. Bring your whole being into this time and this space. For we come together in love. I'd like to begin today's reflection with a poem by Linda Paston titled The Five Stages of Grief. The Five Stages of Grief by Linda Pasta. The night I lost you, someone pointed me towards the five stages of grief. Go that way, they said. It's easy, like learning to climb stairs after the amputation. And so I climbed. Denial was first. I sat down at breakfast, carefully setting the table for two. I passed you the toast. You sat there. I passed you the paper. You hid behind it. Anger seemed more familiar. I burned the toast, snatched the paper and read the headlines myself. But they mentioned your departure. And so I moved on to bargaining. What could I exchange for you? The silence after storms, my typing fingers. Before I could decide, depression came thing up, a poor relation, its suitcase tied together with string. In the suitcase were bandages for the eyes and bottles of sleep. I slid all the way down the stairs feeling nothing. And all the time hope flashed on and off in defective neon. Hope was a signpost pointing straight in the air. Hope my uncle's middle name, he died of it. After a year, I am still climbing, but my feet slip on your stone face. The tree line has long since disappeared. Green is a colour I have forgotten. But now I see what I am climbing towards. Acceptance, acceptance written in capital letters, a special headline, acceptance, its name in lights. I struggle on, waving and shouting. Below, my whole life spreads its serve, all the landscapes I've ever known or dreamed of. Below, the fish jumps, the pulse in your neck, acceptance. I finally reach it. But, but something is wrong. Grief is a circular staircase. 
I have lost you. I remember many years ago attending a family funeral and being told beforehand that many people in attendance that day may not actually be grieving for the person for whose the funeral it was. But they would be grieving for other losses and other people and memories of other funerals they have attended in the past. Over the years I have attended and conducted many funerals and looked at those in attendance as they have, as they have grieved. And as I have connected with them in their tears and their grief, I have often wondered if they were grieving for the deceased or another loved one. Perhaps they were grieving for a mixture of both. I have wondered about my own tears and grief too on such occasions. Well, almost two years ago, I had the question answered. I attended the funeral of someone I did not know, but my girlfriend at the time and now my beautiful wife Sue was leading. Sue is a celebrant and I wanted to see her at work. Her work, by the way, has had to change drastically during and due to the coronavirus. Funerals are being conducted very differently as only the, the immediate family can, can attend. Thankfully, the services are being filmed so other loved ones can watch online. But it still makes this time of loss even harder for the grieving. Hard times, hard times, hard times. But back to that day couple of years ago. We entered the crematorium and I sat towards the back as Sue held us through the service. Almost immediately I began to weep and I wept throughout virtually all of the service. It was not for the woman whose service it was or even for her loved ones. I could not have been, as I, as I did not know them, it could just not have been about that. No, what was happening is that I was finally able to fully let go, to be held in love and to experience my own grief. My grief was for my stepbrother Daniel and my whole confusing and wounded family. Daniel had died only a few days, a week, couple of weeks before. My grief was also for an old friend whose funeral I had recently conducted and grief for congregants and their loved ones who had died in recent months. I also refelt many other losses from over the years. The tears just kept coming. I was able to sink into my own grief because for the first time, I did not need to think about others in attendance to watch out for their pain. I was able to let go and to be held by that incredible love that is there at the core of all life, and I am fully open to it. All of us, every single one of us, belong to the largest community on God's sweet earth, the community of grievers. Grief is the price we pay for love. It is a price worth paying though, for what is life without love? It is nothing, it is meaningless, just an empty vessel. The only way to escape grief is to totally armour your heart and deny love. And who would want to do that? To live without love? To live the life of the zombie, the non-being? I have for these last three years been hosting a grief group called The Colours of Grief, a shared experience of love and loss. It has been an incredible and richly rewarding experience, deeply moving. And it's been all about love, as those who have come and gone and come again have held one another in the spirit of love and shared their own experiences of love and loss. 
I'm currently trying to find a way to host a group online as I know there is a need for it in these difficult times. As I have sat and shared with these people, it's confirmed powerfully to me that grief is all about love. Grief is the price that we pay for love. No one is immune from it. It's what holds us all together. Grief changes you. That said, it's not really the loss that does this, but the love that is at the core of grief. And what hurts the most is the loss, the very real physical loss of the one that we love. There's no consolation for this. And we don't get over it really, not, not really. The pain just becomes a part of us, just as the love we share does too. What actually happens is we don't get over it, but in time, our, life, our lives enlarge once again. and We are no longer dominated by the intense feelings as much as we were. That said, from time to time, the grief will overwhelm us again, just like a tidal wave, like a flood. It can happen years later. But that's love and loss. Love and loss is meant to overwhelm us from time to time. And there's no limit to this, no time limit, at least. You know, it will come again, come again, come. That's love for you. When we lose someone that we love, it changes us forever. Life will never be quite the same again. We do not rise above the pain of grief. We cannot pretend it is not there. We don't get over it. What happens is that it changes us. Our hearts are enlarged by it and we grow as human beings if the love has truly been realised. You see, really, what grief is really about is transformation rather than transcendence. By the way, that's the true nature of the religious or the spiritual life. Transformation, not transcendence. Grief is not an attempt to explain the loss or even understand some meaning locked into what happened. Instead, it seems to me that grief is more about finding meaning in the absence of an explanation. To quote Forrest Church, love is grief's advanced party. I know day by day, I seem to love even more. As a result, I know I will grieve even more. This does not fill me with too much fear, as I picture in my mind's heart, in the, my mind's precious heart, the people I serve and the people I share my life with, as I think of the people I know in the circles I belong to. I feel my heart filling, and sometimes this does bring tears to my eyes. Knowing that the physical aspects of their lives will come to an end, and they will go, but still the love will go on transforming my life and all of our lives as we find the courage, the heart to love. We must never harden our hearts. We must remain vulnerable of heart, open hearted. Knowing one day that our loved ones will grieve the loss of us too. Grief truly is the price that we pay for love. But then, what else is there worth dying for other than love? What else is there? Surely we all want to live in such a way that when our time comes, our lives will prove worth dying for by the love that we leave behind. Surely we all want that. That's a price worth paying. So some questions to ponder. What do you think of this idea that grief is the price we pay for love? Is it a price worth paying? Maybe think about unresolved grief in your own lives. Maybe use this time to explore them. Are there ways you might better live with the examples of love and lost the time for you? What legacy of love do you want to leave behind? 
some things to ponder. I'm going to end this little devotion slightly differently again with a blessing on grief by Joyce Rupp. I keep saying we all need to bless more. Let's live our lives in blessing. Let's become blessings to one another. That's how we lay on love to one another. Isn't that a legacy worth leaving behind? But I invite us now just to still ourselves together once more in silence as we come to an end. Let's be still together. May your circle of understanding and caring persons be many. And may you allow them to support and sustain you in your sadness. May you rest your heartache in the compassionate arms of God each day and find comfort from this enduring love. May you welcome the tears you shed as friends of your soul, gifting you with an opening to release your pain. May disappointment, anger, guilt or any other hurts that cling to you be acknowledged and set free. May you trust the hidden parts of you where your resilience resides and remember often the inner strength of, that your spirit contains. May you find the balance you need between activity and quiet so you can be attentive to your grief. May you be gentle and compassionate with yourself by caring well for your body, mind and spirit. May you believe in your ability to eventually heal from your loss, no matter how much loneliness or desolation you now experience. May you have the necessary energy to focus on the details of life that must be done in spite of how you feel. May the day come when memories of your departed one bring you more comfort than sadness. May the empty hollow in you grow less wide and deep as you receive touches of consolation and assurance of peace. May you be healed from your grief and extend your compassion, ge compassion generously to others who hurt. May you recognise when it is time for you to let go and move on, doing so when your grief has faded and you are ready to allow the past to be at rest. May you trust that love is stronger than death and draw comfort from the bond that unites you with your lover. May love be your guide and may it guide all of us in all that we feel, in all that we think, in all that we say, in all that we do.